But like I said, it is time for our next comedian. Please welcome Francesco Contino. Hello, dear friends. Hello, Liebe. Thank you very much for the introduction. Well, yeah, I'm an engineer and I'm also a professor. I'm a professor in a field that is modern, popular, exciting. Well, some might even say sexy. I'm a professor in thermodynamics. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm a bit overselling it, right? Yeah. Well, it's because I'm uh, feeling there is a bad reputation around thermodynamics. I'm, I'm a bit trying to compensate that bad reputation. Look, we had a fantastic biologist, awkward biologist too. We had uh, Marie Curie. Uh, we had uh, Darth Vader there. We had something around linguistic that I didn't get. And, uh, <laughs> Well, they were all fantastic, and I'm starting now with an handicap. And actually, it started in the classroom. You know, for most students, I have to confess, thermodynamics is like a crossroad in their life. A crossroad between I don't care streets and when does it stop avenue. <laughs> really difficult to convince them. And when you get to the classroom in the introduction lesson, you ask, well, you know, what do you think is thermodynamics so important? And you try to convince them, you try to emphasize how much important it is. You will look around you and, no, not everything is thermodyn uh, biology, it's thermodynamics, really, Eddie. Thank you very much. <laughs> it's thermodynamics. Everything around you is thermodynamics. Everything is linked. And exactly like you are looking at me and saying, no. <laughs> yeah, exactly the same thing. They get back to Facebook or get back to sleep, whatever. And I'm not touching them. I'm still searching for, uh, for an answer. Actually, I'm... Um, I'm trying to challenge them. That's part of my job. Challenge them with uh, orders of magnitude. Orders of magnitude in energy or in power. Uh, for example, I'm trying to ask them, well, do you know how much energy there is in a lightning bolt? Um, do you know how much energy compared to a liter of fuel, for example? Mm, they're looking at me like this, freezed. Actually, they're not looking at me. They're looking through me somehow. And uh, <laughs> I don't I, know. So I'm searching for something else, and uh, yeah, I have another analogy. I have this one liter gasoline breakfast. Yeah, again, I'm trying to oversell it. Uh, actually, I'm asking them, well, do you know the equivalence in food for one liter of gasoline? Uh, no. So I'm telling them, yeah, it's like in the breakfast, you are eating 20 slices of bread with half a jar of Nutella, 15 eggs, half a kilogram of bacon, and you wash it all with two liters of orange juice. Yeah, it's that big. Okay, that's uh, interesting. But as you see, I'm passionate about energy. I'm passionate about fuel. And I'm also passionate about piston engine. I'm also a professor in piston engines, yeah. And we're getting a lot of attention lately with, uh, you know, this emission scandal. For Volkswagen, winter is coming. <laughs> we had that joke already. <laughs> Uh, really, and I was shocked recently with the CEO saying that, yeah, let's blame the engineers. It's probably the fault of the engineer. Okay, maybe not, but we'll see. And, well, what I was shocked at is that, indeed, um, sometimes engineers are not paying attention to all details, you know? Sometimes you send an email to the wrong person. I'm sure you all had this experience before, and actually I had a story about that. Yeah. Recently, I sent a, an email to my colleague, and uh, well, it started like this. Dear Alessandro, let's call him Alessandro since his real name is Alessandro. <laughs> and, uh, you recognize me if you hear the podcast. Dear Alessandro, um, could you please send the attachment to the HR department ASAP because we need their feedback as soon as possible. And well, ask them not to make decorative change. You know, they have plenty of times and you know how much creative they can be with their time. Thank you very much, best regards, Francesco. Yeah, you can imagine what he did. Hit forward, <laughs> HR department sent. Yeah, I got a hard time after that. <laughs> so, uh, getting back to the, the scandal of Volkswagen, I tried to explain that at home too, and you know, conversation with my wife, and all of a sudden, my daughter, she's five, cutest girl in the world, for, some, for, for sure, and she asking me, well, Daddy, you're talking about suit all the time. Suit, suit, suit. What is suit? I was ready. I had two explanations in mind. The not so accurate scientific one and the simplest one. Well, I started with the 
scientific one. And um, well, I started, in my mind it was like this. Well, soot is produced when you have a mixture of air and fuel. In the wrong equivalence ratio region, you are not having a full combustion and then you're producing unburned hydrocarbon, which ultimately leads to soot. She stopped me at fuel. <laughs> Daddy, what is fuel? I said, hmm, okay, let's change the explanation. Um, so I started with something else. We had this, uh, we had this uh, cake operation, let's call it. Um, I said, you remember when we made a cake? Yeah. So we put it all sort of ingredients. I don't remember really what was in it. And um, we started, uh, yeah, mixing them. And you remember what happened? Yes, it was not so good indeed. Uh, we got lumps of flour, yeah, pockets of flour. It was not so good. It's exactly the same with soot. And then she looked at me and said, with a very cute eyes, said, okay, daddy, can I have some cake now? <laughs> so not so much success at home. And unfortunately, it, it's even with my, my wife and uh, my baby son, I tried, but it didn't work so well. So. Um, <clears throat> When I go back to, to this Volkswagen scandal, I was really surprised when I first heard the news. I was so surprised that everybody was surprised. Because, come on, we know they're all cheating, right? They're all changing their results or whatever it is. Well, actually, when you, you, you hear about that, it's, in my opinion, it's a scandal for the homologation tests. It's not really a scandal for the manufacturers. They're all tricking the, the system. And when you look at this, in the list of the three most unreliable and inefficient systems, you have at third, well, Windows operating system, obviously. <laughs> Second, the Belgian political system. <laughs> and first, well, the emission homologation system. It's really that bad, above Belgian political system, imagine. <laughs> and, um, well, wh when you look at the details, it's even worse than that. You are, most of the time, you are just waiting not doing anything in the homologation cycle, and you have acceleration that are really woof, from zero to 50 km per hour in 26 seconds. Yep, that's for a bicycle or a horse carriage. It's not really, it's even slower than a turtle with a broken leg, come on. It's, there is no way you can do that in reality. It's not real. And that's why there is so much difference between real world emissions and homologation size emissions. It's really, Unbelievable that you have uh, so much difference. And anyway, when um, when when you look at those details, I I don't really care whatever whatever will happen with the the, the emission scandal, etc. I'm really a, a very big fan of piston engines. You know, combustion, real power. That's my deal. I'm not a big fan of those um, electric cars. I know it's a big competition for me now. Yeah, yeah. Moby team is there, no? Um, it's, to me, it makes the same noise as the neighbors trying to, really trying to learn violin, you know. <laughs> Ugly noise. Whatever. So, <clears throat> what, who am I to judge? I'm actually the, the young professor without experience, but I know what I will do next year, now I know it. What I will do to emphasize how important thermodynamics is. I will come to my class and tell all the students a really pragmatic thing for thermodynamics. I will come to the class and bring some cake. Thank you very much.